starting in verse 21. Then Peter came and said to him, Lord, how often shall my brother sin against me and I forgive him? Up to seven times. And Jesus said to him, I cannot say to you up to seven times, but up to seventy times seven. For this reason, the kingdom of heaven may be compared to a king who wished to settle accounts with his slaves. When he had begun to settle them, one who owed him 10,000 talents was brought to him. But since he did not have the means to repay, his Lord commanded him to be sold along with his wife and children and all that he had and repayment to be made. So the slave fell to the ground and prostrated himself before him, saying, Have patience with me, and I will repay you everything. And the Lord of that slave felt compassion, and released him and forgave him the debt. But that slave went out and found one of his fellow slaves who owed him a hundred denarii. And he seized him and began to choke him, saying, Pay back what you owe. So his fellow slave fell to the ground and began to plead with him, saying, Have patience with me, and I will repay you. But he was unwilling and went and threw him in prison until he should pay back what was owed. So when his fellow slaves saw what had happened, they were deeply grieved and came and reported to the Lord all that had happened. Then summoning him, his Lord said to him, You wicked slave! I forgave you all that debt because you pleaded with me. Should you not also have mercy on your fellow slave in the same way that I had mercy on you? And his Lord moved with anger, handed him over to the torturers until he should repay all that was owed him. My heavenly Father will also do the same to you if each of you does not forgive his brother from your heart. That's pretty powerful stuff. Forgiveness. As we read through God's Word, most of us here have heard the term thrown out many different times. We talk about forgiveness sometimes with a lackadaisical attitude. We don't really stop to think what forgiveness is truly all about. What God means when He talks about forgiveness. So today we're going to look a little bit at what is forgiveness. What is Jesus Christ talking about here? He's talking to Peter, one of His disciples. And Peter's asking about forgiveness. He's asking about you know, how many times do I have to forgive somebody if they do the same thing? If you have raised kids, you know about kids. They do the same thing many more times than seven usually before they get the answer. Chelsea, as Sadie gets a little older, you're going to find out <laughs> that when she does hit those teen years, seven times 70 is usually not enough. <laughs> I'm hearing laughter out of there. I don't know whose mom that was, Dan. Her Adam, maybe. <laughs> but as we go through life, we, we throw that term out a lot. And, and sometimes we, we just think that's what it is. It, it's kind of, well, the kids did something or somebody did something, and they say, oh, I'm sorry, and we say okay, and we consider that as forgiveness, and we move on to the next thing. But as Jesus sits with Peter, he gives him an example of something in this world that he can use to understand what the kingdom of heaven is like. And as we look through the scriptures, many times Jesus does that. He'll use worldly things to explain things so we understand them. And as he says here at the start, 
He says, for this reason, the kingdom of heaven may be compared to a king who wished to settle his accounts with his slaves. So he's comparing this king to God. He's using that for an example. So that we understand what's going on. Now I asked, what is forgiveness? Well, forgiveness is he's using it in this context, in this, this scripture, is the forgiving of a debt. Now an English teacher will say you cannot use part of the word in your definition. So you can't use forgive when describing forgiveness. So what it is, is you're taking a debt and not having to pay it. If you've ever had a loan from the bank, it would be nice if the bank called up and says, hey, it's paid. You don't have to pay another dime. That would be nice. I don't know if you have any bankers in here. Take that. See how nice you can be to people. No. But it is. It's paying something off that somebody else owes. Now, as we look at this, this scripture message here, the guy comes in and he owes something to the king. And the king's got to hold him accountable for it. Does the king have to do what he did and write it off? No. He could demand it to be paid. Now, we look at our God, and sometimes we take it pretty simple. We say, God, forgive me, and He forgives us. Now, we do something, or we're thinking something, or we don't do something. We just casually, you know, oh, God, forgive me. I didn't mean to do that. And we just go on about our way sometimes. We become so lackadaisical, so careless with our lives that we don't really think about it. The debt that we owe, according to the Bible, is a debt for our sin. Not a singular, not plural. And the reason it's a singular is because one sin is what that debt ends up being. For one sin, we will spend eternity in hell. The Bible is very clear about that. Now, I have many more sins than one. So I have many more debts. There's only one eternity I can spend in hell. But I had many more debts than just the one sin. And the forgiveness we got for that one sin was something I didn't deserve. God has every right to give me what I I deserve what I owe because the wages of sin are death. And so, because of sin, we had total separation from God. Every one of us here had total separation. We owe debt. Just like the slave did to the king, we owe a debt. Because of his purity. There was no way God could have sin around him. Because of his purity. The two don't mix. 
So that debt had to be paid somehow. Now the king in the story, he paid the debt. The money was still owed. But he took it and he paid it. And that's what we have in Jesus Christ. Is God decided that we did not deserve to spend eternity in heaven. But He wanted us there. He wanted to enjoy eternal companionship with each one of us. It was His love. Not that we deserved it. God's forgiveness is nothing we deserve. We will never deserve what God did for us. It was a free gift. He decided to send His Son down to suffer our punishment. You know, there's movies out, The Passion of the Christ, and there's been movies, a Jesus movie. And when they go through the, the torture that Christ was put through, the crucifixion on the cross, we oftentimes don't really stop to think that is truly what we deserve. Was to be tortured for our sins. To be sin. To spend eternity separated from God in hell. That is what each one of us deserves. But God in His loving kindness, didn't want that. You know, you look, at, you look at us nowadays when you look at the court situations that we see on TV. When the judgments are passed and the debt that the criminal is paid, or not paid, but sentenced down, you know, they go through a big court drama and everything, and finally they get convicted. And what do they do? They appeal. And they appeal. And they appeal. Well, there is no appeal for us. It was case closed. The first time you ever sinned in your life, the case was closed. You had no hope. You had no recourse. You had no appeal. But the God of all creation didn't want it that way. He would rather, He would take your punishment and your suffering and your pain and make it possible for you to spend eternity with Him. That's what forgiveness is about. He paid what you owe. He paid what I owe. He didn't pay it because we wanted Him to. He didn't pay it because He had to. He paid it because He wanted to. He loved us so much that He wanted to pay our, our debt. He went to the cross for me. He took my stripes that should have been on my back. The beatings I should have taken. He took them. And He went to the cross for Don Petri personally. And He went to the cross for each one of you personally. You know, John 3.16, most of us here can quote it. We've quoted it many times. In fact, we've quoted it to where we really start to lose the meaning of it. But next time you read it, I want you to put your name in there. For God so loved Don that He gave His only begotten Son that if Don believed in Him, Don would have eternal life and not perish. That's pretty powerful. 
we bring it down to a personal scale, one on one, my debt was paid. Is your debt paid? Have you accepted Jesus Christ? Have you accepted the forgiveness? Now, if you've accepted that forgiveness, I've got a question for you. Have you ever passed it on? And I'm not talking about passing on just sharing the gospel. That's not what this message is about. That's not what the king was doing here. What the message was about was the slave received forgiveness. The king paid his debt. And it was a huge debt. But yet the guy goes out and he looks at somebody else. And he doesn't look at him with love and forgiveness. He holds that sin against that person. He holds what that person lives like. What that person has done against him. And I would guess everyone in this room has done that at different times. I know I have. You know, when God gave it, forgave us for an eternity in hell, He gave us something not one of us could do anything about. He did, he did that for each one of us. He didn't hold our sins against us anymore. They're wiped out. They're clean. They are no longer. They're as white as snow. Every single sin. Have you ever listed your sins? You know, sometimes... Sit down and just go back over the week and start writing down what, what your sins were that week. You know, I'm going to be honest with you. I'm not a prayed person. I enjoyed the praying. I'm not a person that works real good under time constraints to get stuff ready for parades, to get signs ready for parades. That's not my thing. If I had to list my sins, they would be a pretty big list this week <laughs> where I allowed the stress to get a little high. My wife, 